Okay, so we are recording, and um, so everybody, you know, welcome. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna just open this up in prayer and uh, make a quick um, few housekeeping um, announcements, and then after that, I'm gonna turn it into the hands of our brother Keith. All right. Thank you. Okay. Father God, we thank you once again for allowing us to meet and giving and showing your grace and your mercy. Father, we ask that as we commune and break bread with one another, Lord, we ask that uh, that you continue, that you be in the midst, and Lord, give us revelation knowledge, give us wisdom and understanding, Lord, that we may be able to understand the, the purpose of, of uh, the subject at hand. And Lord, we ask that you just um, uh, touch those that are um, on their way, touch those that are, you know, that are, are that are pressing for pressing pressing through to try to get here. We ask that you um, that you send your your angels to open the open the way for them to get to the to the place where they need to be. And Lord, we ask that you um, touch the mouth of the facilitator, then the teacher. Lord, let the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart, Lord, be holy and acceptable unto you. And let nothing that he says, Lord, be, let everything that he says be God-breathed. And Lord, we give you honor and praise for everything that's about to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. I'm going to pray something myself. I like to pray to God. Heavenly Father, you are holy. All that you do is holy. Holy is your name. We come knocking on your kingdom's door, seeking to know your will and asking that you give us every word that proceeds out of your mouth yes. for today. And if anyone has sinned or trespassed against uh, this group, we're asking that you do not hold it to their account, but that you forgive them of their sins and trespasses, even as you forgive us of our sins and trespasses. Yes. We are also asking that you lead us into, a, into our battle to take our promised land that you remind us, as, as you lead us, that you remind us of its green pastures, its flowings with milk and honey. Remind us of the cattle that, are, that is there on, that's grazing on a thousand hills. We are praying that you lead us away from the places where we are drawn out and we are enticed by our own evil fleshly desires. And that if ever it is your will to bring us through any valleys that are filled with the shadows of death, that you remind us that you're of your precious and great promises to never allow us to be tried or tempted beyond the points where we can bear it. Remind us that you will deliver us from any and every uh, temptation by providing us with a way of escape. Grant that we as your people will always see your rod of discipline and your staff of protection with feelings of joy and comfort. For the kingdom with all of its power, with all of its glory, and with all of its honor is yours forever and ever. And we say amen to that. Amen. Amen. So getting right down to it, the question is why and how should believers openly confess their sins within the body of Christ? And um, well, I want to deal with the why. Why? Why? The greatest and most reasonable explanation for why a believer should openly make a good confession of himself openly within the body of Christ is because of the existing battle that is raging between good and evil. It is necessary for us, one, for each one of us to openly declare which side we're on. Um, we have good and evil, light and darkness, death and life, all these contrasting um, uh, they're extremes, mm -hmm. fully extremes. All right. Um, I'd like to go to Genesis three fourteen and fifteen, where all of this thing, this whole conflict, took place between good and evil. Okay, so um, I, I can wait to see if everybody's there, or if y'all just like to listen. I'm reading from the King James version. And it says, and the Lord God said unto the serpent. Uh, what was the scripture again? It's Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Okay, Genesis, okay. 
Genesis chapter 3. Okay. Got it. All right. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And this is the part right here. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his field, his heel. Um, and I and I, I I put a little commentary to that verse. It says, in the scripture cited above, we have the first pronouncement of judgment from Almighty God. Within this judgment, God makes a declaration of war. Speaking directly to the serpent who instigated the whole situation, God tells him that there will be enmity between himself and the woman and between his own seed and the seed of the woman. During this pronouncement of judgment, God prophetically provides the serpent with a dual snapshot that seems to indicate the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. The picture seems to allude to a deadly encounter between a serpent and a man. This prophetic picture shows that the serpent will have an encounter with the heel of a man's foot. And as the heel of a man's foot, either stepping or maybe stomping on the serpent's head, which would result in the bruising of the serpent's head. So too, the serpent's biting and bruising a man's heel could possibly include the release of the serpent's deadly venom into the man. Whichever scenario or combination of these scenarios would come to pass, the prophetic picture is one of a deadly conflict between the serpent and the seed of the woman. Um, um, how many people have struggled with, 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 with this portion of the scripture um, because of the narrative seemingly presenting uh, almost a cartoonish uh, picture of a, a talking snake and with a with a human woman and um, and thereby extend being extended prophetically to look like okay we're gonna have the children of snakes uh, dealing with the children of woman and then one, one, one from among the children of the woman is going to step on the snake's head and bruise it, but in the process, receive a bruise in their heel. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to comment on that whole picture that God gave us? And this is dealing with the fall of man. This is dealing with the most important thing that ever happened from the very beginning to humanity. Okay. Uh, you're asking if anyone has had a problem with the uh, with this particular passage of scripture. Yeah, I want to know um, what is what is God what is the scriptures actually saying to you when it talks about this um, this picture of a of a, a man's heel bruising a serpent's head and the serpent bruising the man's heel. Well, uh, typically what I get from this is that um, the, that there's going, again, you know, there's going to be a, um, a battle back and forth between, um, because when you, we say the word enmity, I will put enmity between, I will put um, discord, I will put, um, there's always going to be a certain uh, strife between you and and there's going to be um, in your seed, um, her seed, um, she'll bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So basically there's gonna be a constant battle. So he'll be constantly bruising the head of the serpent. Um, the seed will constantly be bruising the head of the serpent, whereas the serpent will be constantly bruising the heel of the seed. And it would almost seem, but um, even with that, it would seem that the 
the seed has a dominant position because again, it is, you know, it seems like because the snake has to kind of, you know, go along its belly, it always seems like the, the seed is going to have a dominant position no matter how much he bruises, or no matter how much the serpent bruises the heel of the seed. Okay. Well, yeah. but anybody else? I, I, when I, when it says something about, when it says bruising, I thought um, when, with, with Christ, I mean, Christ is basically has bruising Satan's head because mm -hmm. when Christ came in, you know, and he died, he arose on the third day. It mm -hmm. was like he bruised his head because Satan was thinking that he had the, um, I guess, the upper hand until the Lord Jesus Christ arose on the third day. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, the heel part, um, and you shall bruise his head. The woman shall bruise her head because she's the one that's going to birth Christ mm -hmm. in order for him to save us. So the the enemy is um, Satan is our enemy, and he will mm -hmm. do anything he can do to to get us to follow you know evil and different paths and everything. But because of Christ doing his life on earth, and when he rose on the third day, he shall bruise um, his head, and it's okay. like a fourth battle, I guess. Okay, and so I. I... I visualize a snapshot, a picture mm -hmm. of of someone's foot coming down, coming down on the head of Satan, of, of the of the snake. But the snake's mouth is open with his fangs, getting ready to pierce the heel of the foot that's coming down on him. So the picture is prophetic in that it's a, it's a, it's it's this is a deathly situation because. It can be deathly for the snake because you crush the snake, the snake's head, it's gone. But it could be deadly for the man whose yes, foot is coming down because he gets bit and the venom can kill him. Mm -hmm. So 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 God from the very beginning just puts a puts a picture in the enemy's mind that, oh, I could win. Mm -hmm. And even if I die, I could win. Mm -hmm. Because I can mm -hmm. take this person out. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and God leaves that a question mark throughout history. And that's why every time someone who's going to deliver to God's people or be a leader amongst God's people is getting ready to be born, Satan's going to act crazy. He's going to start killing the babies because mm -hmm. he doesn't know which one it's going to be. So mm -hmm. I'll kill them all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, and so the picture, the picture is prophetic. We also, I mean, but but the scenario of what you of the narrative is a snake is talking to a woman. Snakes, I would think, have snakes for children. So how did the snake get kids? Or is this an and or is this portion of scripture analytical? Is it figurative? Is the snake a snake? Or is God talking to the snake, but he's actually talking to the adversary? Mm -hmm. And when we when and when he's talking about enmity between the adversary and the woman, is the woman Eve or is the woman somebody else? A bigger picture that we learn in in, in uh, revelations to come. Because the seed of the woman. Uh, I know we're all children of, of Eve, but um, I believe there's a very larger picture there because um, not all of us humans are sons of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we, we, if if you turn to the the, the chapter eight of John, we find. Um, some some identifications of uh, the serpent's children. John chapter eight. Chapter eight, yes. Uh, what verse? Uh, we can start with. Um, let's see. I think it's all the way down in the forties. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
John chapter 8, verse 44. Verse 44? Uh-huh. All right, let me uh, mm -hmm. get there. Really you quick. are your father's the devil. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, chapter 40. You said chapter 44? 44, yes. No, chapter chapter 8, verse 44. Cha okay, chapter 8, verse 44. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll go ahead and read. I'm reading from the um, King James. Um, all right. You are, uh, you are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Mm. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Mm -hmm. You want to keep, keep going? That's, that's fine. And we know from the context that Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes and those who did not believe in him. Um, matter of fact, in that, in that chapter earlier on, they did believe in him a little bit. They started believing him and then Jesus kept talking with them and then they stopped believing just that quick. Um, and, and it, it seems that they were sons of the devil, uh, because like I said, they could not receive the word of God. People who believe in everything other than the word of God, uh, the seed of the serpent resides within them. Just like those of us who believe in the word of God, the seed of the, which is the word of God resides in us. And so Satan's children is every human being that believes his lies and has no, no belief in the, in, in the words of God or the word of God. And so we have Jesus in um, chapter three of John talking to Nicodemus, explaining to Nicodemus that even though you're born a human being, mm -hmm. it's necessary for you to be born again in order to get into the kingdom of God. So in actuality, this might be a hard thing to uh, admit to many, but all of us in our first birth become, are, are, are conceived and, and we come out as children of the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I, I, I love the people that come to Right the Divide because y'all's teachers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I think so, because I, I, y'all are not babyish in your understanding. I, I know this, because I know some people uh, who've been church and been, have, they've been church for a long time, and yet they struggle with uh, the narrative that a serpent is actually our adversary, Satan. They, they don't see it, and I don't mm -hmm. understand why they don't see that, but, but God does what he wants to do. Um, but yeah, and so... We have the seed of Satan. We have the seed of uh, God. And if, if we turn to um, the book of uh, Galatians mm -hmm. and the, um, the book, book of Galatians. Yes. Okay. The fourth chapter of Galatians. Mm -hmm. Is that fourth chapter? Yeah, number four. And, um, starting from verse 
The 22? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, mm -hmm. one by a bond woman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh. Mm -hmm. And he of the free woman through promise. That's right. Which things are symbolic for these are the two covenants the one from mount sinai which gives birth to bondage which is hagar mm -hmm. for this hagar is mount sinai in uh, arabia and corresponds to jerusalem which now is and is in bondage with her children but the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate has made, has the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Now we brethren, as Isaac now now we brethren as Isaac was our children of promise but as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit even so it is now nevertheless what does the scripture say cast out the bondwoman and her son for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then barren, so so then brethren, we are not children of the bond woman, but of the free. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and when we talk about the, the conversation that Jesus was having with the Pharisees and the scribes, um, they were so adamant about being under the law, mm -hmm. being under that old covenant, mm -hmm. trying to demonstrate that they could live up to the law of God mm -hmm. that um, they wasn't trying to hear what he was trying to say. They couldn't understand it. Um, they thought that, okay, the law, this is the law of God. We are told to keep it. We've promised that we would keep it. And then um, here he comes saying, um, you can't keep it. It was given to you to show you exactly what you are. You can't keep it. You are the child of the devil. Mm -hmm. There ain't no truth. There's no truth in him. There ain't no truth in you. So the only thing that you need to do, because you look at the law, you see how wonderful and good it is. And so you think, okay, I'm going to try to attain to it. But every time you try, you wind up having to sacrifice a lamb or a goat mm -hmm. or a sheep because you keep messing it up. But see, if you was really reading the, the law of Moses, the law of Moses was pointing to a time when there would see someone who would come that was greater than Moses, him, and, and that would be able to set you free. Amen. And then, then they, and they got Adam and said, we, we ain't bastards. We're not a fornication. We are free. And Jesus said, no, he, mm -hmm. who's, he who commits sin is a slave to sin. That's right. And so and so, if you if you if the, the, you read the scriptures because you think within them you have eternal life, but the scriptures are ones that bear witness of me, and but you won't come to me. Mm -hmm. And so, once again, the good confession that we are to make is openly is that no, we're not the Christ. No, um, we are sinners. No, we're good for nothing slaves. No, actually, we're pretty much sons of the devil. And because we're born according to the flesh and we got sin all up in us and, and, and we and we need to be born again from God's spirit. We need to we need to be born in our inner man. Mm -hmm. 
And so, um, and so, and 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 the, the promised land that we're looking forward to is not in Arabia. It's not the Jerusalem that's on the earth. It's not under the covenant uh, where there was a high priest that only was able to get in there once a year, and they had to do this every year to remind us that you know we still haven't made it right. But we're we we're, we're, we're looking to go to New Jerusalem, the one above, and that city. That's our mother. When God was talking to the serpent, Satan, he mm -hmm. they knew exactly what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because God mm -hmm. talks in one way, yay, and then two. And see, he was he was doing it back then, he was doing it during the time he was walking the earth. He will say something and he say, you know what? Destroy this temple. And I'll raise it up in three days. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they were, what? They were <laughs> all up in the physical and they, yeah. and they wasn't really hearing him, what he was saying, but we know what he was saying. Amen. Yes. So, um, it's, it's so much, I don't know. I love this, this, this rightly divided thing that y'all got going here because, um, it's the very thing that we're told, we're admonished, we're commanded to do this. Mm -hmm. to um to search the scriptures and 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 really find out what's really going on with, with the things that God has told us um uh we're told in Hebrews the second chapter the reason why we need to be born again we need to be born the first time because we need to be human mm -hmm. we have to be human we can't um Many times in scripture, like in Daniel and other places, it says, and, and a man appeared in dazzling white. Mm -hmm. That was actually an angel. They're called right. men. They're called men too sometimes. But, um, but you can't be an angel and receive this because angels are not born. Spirit. Yeah, they're spirit. They're not spirit. born. And mm -hmm. so there's a need. When Jesus said, you must be born again. Mm hmm he was emphasizing yeah. the word again in the sense that um, you have to be born once. And then after that, you have to be gone, born a second time. He said you have to be born of water, which is being born physically, to be born of water. And you have to be born of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because many times the scriptures indicate that Jesus, it says Jesus Christ, born of a woman under the law. Um, that was necessary. Baptized by John. John said, Well, I need to be baptized. Yeah, you, I need you. You need to baptize me. Jesus said, Let this be so for all righteousness to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a need for him, for Jesus to come through the whole human experience mm -hmm. to yeah. be definitely proven that we was totally human. Mm -hmm. And right. then so that so that he could we could follow in him humanly all the way to his death. And then when, when we also have to die like he died, that's necessary. And then after we have a mindset to follow him all the way. So, cause, cause he never walked by the flesh. He always walked by the spirit, even though he was in the flesh. And so therefore those of us who follow him as his disciples, we, even though we're in the flesh, we don't walk according to the flesh. And so therefore, as in chapter two of Hebrews, Mm -hmm. He's not ashamed to call us brethren. Um, mm -hmm. Can somebody read chapter two? Okay. What was that again? Hebrews? Hebrews chapter two, yes. Oh, Hebrews chapter two. two. You got it, Grace? You got it? I am. Oh, go ahead and if you have it, go ahead and read it. I'm just going to put it yeah, on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm reading from the IV. So it says, A warning against drifting away. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. The message God delivers through angel has always proved true, and the people were punished for every violation of the law and every act of the disobedience. What makes us think that we can escape if we are indifferent to this great salvation that was announced by the Lord Jesus himself? It was passed on to us by those who heard him speak, and God verified 
the message by signing by signs and wonders and various miracles and by giving gift of the Holy Spirit wherever he choose to do so. And furthermore, a future world we are talking about will not be controlled by angels. For somewhere in the scripture it says, what a man that you should think of him and a son of man that you should care for him. For a little while you made him lower than the angels and you crowded him with glory and honor. You gave him authority over all things. Mm -hmm. Now, when it says all things, it means nothing is left out, but we have not yet seen all of his happening. What we do see is Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels and now with glory and honor because he suffered the death for us. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone in the world. And it was only right that God who made everything and for whom everything was made should bring his many children into glory through the suffering of Jesus. God made him a perfect leader, one fit to bring them into their salvation. So now Jesus and the one who he made holy have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call him brother and sister. For he, for he said to God, I will declare the wonders of your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among all people. He also said, I will put my trust in him. And in the same context, he said, here I am together with the children God has given me. Mm -hmm. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, Jesus also became flesh and blood by being born in a human form. For only as a human being could he die and only by dying could he break the power of the devil mm -hmm. who had the power of death. Yes. Amen. 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 Only in this way could he deliver those who had lived all their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Mm -hmm. We all know that Jesus came to help the descendants of Abraham, not to help the angels. Therefore, it is necessary for Jesus to be in every respect like us, his brother and sister, mm -hmm. so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Yes. He then could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself had gone through suffering and temptation, he is mm -hmm. able to help us when we are being tempted. Amen. Amen. Been there, done that. Yeah, there, there was, um, it is very, very evident and very true that, you know, Jesus had to come in the form of a human being. Uh -huh. we know that Jesus had to be born. We, we have to be born again. Yeah. And looking at John chapter three, as it relates to being born again of spirit and of water, uh -huh. we, at, um, there's two births. There's a, a, a physical birth and then there's a spiritual birth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The water is the washing is the word of God. Okay. That washes us clean from our sins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we have to be cleansed. To become righteous we have to be cleansed to become god's children mm -hmm. because we are, we are born sinners okay and so when like nicodemus said how can you go back into your mother's womb so he was looking at that from the physical standpoint mm -hmm. we are to look at everything god does from a spiritual standpoint mm -hmm. what well, that is that you keisha that's Paul. Oh, Paul. That was Paul. That's Paul. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, and we need to know more. Than, I need to know y'all a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, um, we we disagree, and that's okay. There's mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of schools of thought when it says Jesus. When Jesus said, "You must be born of water and the mm -hmm. Spirit," a lot of yes. people think that um, you must be born of water means water baptism. But mm -hmm. um, I've come to the understanding that. Uh, to be born of water is to actually be physically born because yeah. and that's why i say he was putting emphasis on the word again because 
the word again, you can't have the word again unless you have something one time and then you have it again. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the, water, the, the, the water birth is mm -hmm. in line with Nicodemus saying, should I, can I climb back into my mother's womb and be water birthed again? Mm -hmm. He said, truly, I said, you must be born of water and the spirit. And so the emphasis, I believe, he's putting it, he's saying, and, okay, you're born of water, but you also must be born of spirit. Um, but that's not a salvation question. In a lot, in a lot of ways, that can be argued until Jesus gets back. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine, you know. Um, but I, I totally... I Totally get it. There is that is one of those that people will be talking about until Jesus comes home. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. Again, you know what you what God gives you, He gave you, and what God gives right. me, he gives me. Right. Yes. Um, but, you know, so when we talk, uh, you know, and just in my perspective of that, when we talk about water and physical birth, as a woman gives water, as gives birth, there is a water that comes forth. Yes. But that is that fleshly. That is of the flesh. Exactly. So I talks mm. about spirit. Right. And the, the water that he gives is living water. It's water that cleans and clean, clear and right. and new and renewing right. of who you are. Because when right. you came here, you were a sinner. Absolutely. And you cannot be part of me if I don't cleanse you. That's true. But, but so so we're not. Go ahead. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Kiss you. I mean, Paula. <laughs> I want, but I want to, I, what I was trying to make clear from uh, uh, the second chapter of, of Hebrews was you can't get into Christ. You can't get into the kingdom unless, not through this gospel anyway, you can't get into the kingdom. Right, and, Jesus. Uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, let me finish. <laughs> and, 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 until, until you are, uh, until you admit that you are born a sinner yes he didn't, he didn't come for the righteous right he only came for the sinners so you must be born a sinner mm -hmm. have anything to do with him right mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. that's all that and that, that, that point is done let's go forward <laughs> all right um oh um okay so so are we gonna are we gonna like okay well, never mind you might answer my question right away. i'm but, listening I don't no, know. No, go ahead, go ahead. I got to know. What did you say? No, I was just saying. Um, are we? Are you about to go into John by chance? What, what's What's in John? Talk to me. Um, because um, we, we were talking about baptism, and so when yes, we we see where um, uh, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in regards to. Okay, you're breaking up. Oh, really oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I yeah, hear. I can hear you. Okay. Um, you know, we were talking about how Jesus was um, talking to Nicodemus in regards Is that to. Are you from? Um, huh? No, I'm kind of like right up on my computer. I can hear him clearly. Is it is your phone, maybe? You can't hear him, Paula. 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 Something must happen to her phone. Okay. Because I can hear you clearly. Okay, can you hear me, Dad? Okay, I can. I can. All right. So, um, in regards to um, Jesus um, talking to Nicodemus, you know, we he talk, talks to him about the water baptism, but mm -hmm. then he also, and then, but then later on, uh, actually, well, let's swap that. Um, he talks to he talks to Nicodemus, and he has a, he has a conversation with Nicodemus, and he also has a conversation with John. Can you hear me okay now, Paula? Yes, yes. But he says, um, he says to Is Nicodemus, anybody else frozen or is it just me? Uh, it's just probably you, just I think. You. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, help our phone get cleared so Amen. she can listen in the name of Jesus. Heavenly in the name Father. of Jesus. The connection. Let the connection come together, Lord. You know you're able. So okay. with these conversations that happen, John, he told John, um, you know, 
we have to do this to fulfill our righteousness. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. There's, you know, he's like, this must be done to fulfill our righteousness, the baptism of repentance. Right. And then, but then we, we also talk, just talked about it, Nic- you know, with Nicodemus is like, well, you should, must be born again. And again, it's argued that that baptism is the uh, bap- baptism of, you know, of the birth right. of, so my question would, and then we also, then we also have the baptism of, of the spirit. Mm-hmm. So based on what we've just said, I would imagine that there's three. Three. Um. Because we talk about, you know, we were talking about how um, Nicodemus, he's like, when we're talking about the water baptism with Nicodemus, he's like, that was the birth, you know, that was when, you know, when a, when a man is born of a woman, there's that, there's the baptism into the earth, you know, there's that baptism. Oh. Um, and then Jesus then says, okay, but we have to do this. To merge you. To fulfill, oh. fulfill all right, to fulfill all righteousness, this repentance, this confession of, you know, saying that I am a sinner. Mm-hmm. And then the baptism of the spirit. So I'm just okay. kind of, I'm just kind of throwing it out there. I'm not, you know, drawing the conclusion. I'm just saying that based on how we've Uh talked about this, it would, it would, uh, I would draw to a conclusion if I was uh, on the outside looking in that there would be three. Okay. To to clarify, Chris, are you saying because you were born of a woman, that's water. And then we Mm -hmm. have to be submerged in water for our sins. Mm -hmm. And then we have to be in, in the spirit. That's Okay. Wow. That's, I never looked at it I'm, that way. Okay. Um, I think, I think, first of all, your terms, uh, don't jump over terms. You have to be born of water. Uh, and um, they, Nick, Jesus and Nicodemus were not talking about baptism at the time. They were right. talking about birth. Correct. Right. It wasn't baptism. Okay. They were talking about. okay. That's straight. Okay. Um, later on in that chapter, in chapter three, um, we have a situation where um, the Jesus and his disciples are going to the, the, the region of the Jordan, and they're and 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 Jesus is making disciples, and John is making disciples, and they're in close proximity because, as the narrative says, there was a lot of water over there. So we can all get, we can all do what we're doing as far as baptizing, and making disciples, and so that's when that conversation happens between. Um, Jesus and a, and a, and one of the Pharisees about purification, but um, and I don't want to get too far into that, but 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 but, why um, did, but but I guess my question would be, why did Jesus tell John, well, I have to do this because again, according to okay, you want that? I got the answer to that. Okay, got it. All right, here, here it comes. Okay, Israel had not seen a prophet for four hundred years. Mm-hmm. Now. All of a sudden, there's somebody in the wilderness crying in the wilderness. They are not part of the community. They are, this is strange. They haven't seen anything like this since the days of old. They've read about it, but now something's happening here. And this man is not just some ordinary dude that decided that he wanted to get started in a ministry or something. He's been out there for a while to the point where they forgot who he was. He's mm-hmm. the son of, um, of Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth and, her, and her husband. The, the, Zachariah. The Zachariah. Yeah, right. And, but he's been gone for a while. They forgot. And he's out there. And he's been out there. He survived out there that long. Okay. And his food is locusts and wild honey. This is when Jesus asked the people, when you went out to see that man, what did you go out to see? And they all knew that this was a prophet. Okay, so God has raised up a prophet in this, in this day and age, and the prophet has a ministry of repentance. It seems that God has told this prophet, he's given him an assignment. I want all Israel to come out to you for repentance. But guess what? There's a needle in the haystack. Mm-hmm. And when I when 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 this one particular person comes, you point to this person and says, This 
is my beloved son whom I am with of whom I am well pleased. Jesus had to come through um, the ministry of the last prophet in Israel that that everyone would know that this is the reason why John was raised up to be a prophet in Israel and he was been, there was no no man greater than this John mm -hmm. that he might introduce the Israel's Messiah to them. Mm -hmm. John said, this is your husband, Israel. Oh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. He's the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just the best man. Yeah. Anyway, but, but it, I don't know if that clears anything up, but. Not the, really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm what sorry. was the question? <laughs> no. My my question my question was um, when when talks to when 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 Jesus is having the conversation with John that okay in fact let's just go to it really quick. Um, they don't have a conversation. Oh, you mean when he says okay? He's like, John, John, be, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, preventing, yeah, preventing. Yeah. So John, so everyone knows the story where Jesus goes to the Jordan. Yeah. And. Um, he's going to be baptized, mm -hmm. and John, and then John says, "No, I need to be baptized of you. This right. is the baptism of repentance." Right. And Jesus tells him, "No." Uh, he says, "He kind of says, no. We need to do this because we need to fulfill all righteousness." You know what that means? We got to do this the right way. Right. So, yeah, we got to do this the right way. There's steps. God has a purpose in raising up a prophet that will introduce the Messiah to his nation. There's I, steps I, to it. I get that. So okay. what I'm saying is when we talked about the water baptism that he the conversation that he had with Nicodemus in regards to the water baptism, we all agree that he was talking about birth. Yes, I believe he's talking about okay, we yeah, believe he's talking about birth. Yes. And then we also have in Acts, in the book of Acts, uh, chapter two, the day of Pentecost, we have the baptism of the Hold Holy on. Spirit. What happened? At Pentecost. That? At Pentecost, yeah. Okay. Okay. But somewhere right around in there, it says we have this thing called the baptism of repentance. That's what John was doing. So my question is. Are there three? You have to, okay. No. Look, so asking, what's the first one three, then? Are you, you're asking, are there three baptisms? No, I'm just, yeah, I'm just asking. I'm just kind of asking, it's like, because based on the, you know, the conversation was like, a man must be born of water in order, you know, first okay, he must be born okay. of water. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, so let, we need to understand what actual the ceremony of baptism actually is. Okay. When you baptize somebody in water, you baptize them in somebody's name. Uh, when, the, when, when Paul was going through uh, some part of Asia and he came across some disciples and he said, um, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, we've never even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then Paul said, so what baptism was you baptized under? And they said, the baptism of John. Okay. And then Paul explained, well, John was, and so when you, whenever someone was being baptized, they were becoming the person's disciple under whom they were baptized under, and they were okay. following his teachings. That's okay. all that baptism meant, was that you were becoming right. the disciple of so somebody. When said, so when um, Jesus said that you must be born of water and spirit, when he says born of water, is it the same water as a physical birth? You need to be human. Okay. So he's born of water. That means you become human. Yeah, then I you have that. the bapti then you have the baptism, which then because then you you re you recognize that I am a sinful person and that I need to be um born I need, again. I need, and I need to be born again. Yes. You know, I need a savior. Yes. Okay, and then so that will be considered a baptism at that point. Um, when the Holy Spirit 
is, is you immersed in God's spirit, that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, but I mean, this water one, this water baptism. That's a baptism of, basically, you could say it's a baptism of repentance or you, it's actually, but it's a baptism where you become a disciple of the Lord Jesus A follower Christ. of Christ. A follower yeah, of Christ, right. yeah. That's All I'm, that and, I, and I'm really trying to get it, um, I'm I guess I'm really trying to get uh, um, to a place where it's like, let's not, you know, let's, let's like bring out the, let's like, you know, um, eliminate the confusion if, you know, if we could. Like when 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 he talks to Nicodemus and says you must be born of water, it's like okay, you must be a human. Yes. You know you must you must come into a, an understanding that okay, you're a human. Then once you realize you're human and that you are in sin, now it is a there there's a, a process that you need to go through because yes. now you're saying okay, yes, I've been born of water. I am now in this sinful flesh. Yes. Uh, yes. I need a savior. So now I, I, I confess the fact that I am a sinful creature. Now I'm ready to um, give myself over to Jesus, who will now be the Lord of my life. So yes. now I am going through. And so my initiation is to be submerged into water and to come up. And now I am a um, I'm considered a new creature. I am now. Um, I have now gone through the initiation process and now Jesus is my Lord. No, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes. Wait, when you get baptized in water in Jesus' name or in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that really does make a difference. Um, what you're saying is, okay, I'm going to be Jesus' disciple now. Mm -hmm. yeah. In other yeah. words, when Jesus gave the Great Commission, said, um, um, make disciples of all men, Baptizing right. them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Jesus, whatever. Uh, uh, teaching them all that I have commanded you. You become right. a student. Right. That's when you become a disciple. Correct. Okay. Um, um, and, and, you know, because Jesus had disciples before he poured out the Holy Spirit. So you become a disciple. Uh -huh. and, then, and then, whatever your particular day of Pentecost is, you will receive the immersion in God's spirit. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, so, I, want to, I want to clear up something. There were people who were following John who were John's disciples, and then mm -hmm. John said to him, go and follow that man, and then they went and got baptized in Jesus' name again. Oh, that's where the Jesus' name comes in, and the, whole, the, Father, the, whole, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is when... John the Baptist did no, that. No, 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 no. That's just a formula that one of these people use, but that's fine. They can let them do what they want. But um, um, because when you get to baptize in the name of Jesus, you're being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we yeah, want it's the same that. thing, but I'm just saying how they get the difference where I know when they baptize, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, he said the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then when you said just now that they went and got baptized again in Jesus' name, because he said, John said to go follow him, because he's the fourth runner that you need to follow him. Oh, no, I, I, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to make that distinction um, okay. like that. I was just saying when before, I mean, because John, I think John and Peter, they were disciples of, of, of John the Baptist first. And then John said, that's the land to take away the sins of the world. Go follow him. They got baptized um, as disciples of Jesus after that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and water right. again. All right. Just so I don't. Okay. And I, and so, I don't want to. I don't want to throw us off topic. And I'm sorry about that. That's um, all right. Bri Brianna has a uh, her hand up really quick. I want to just uh, give her an opportunity to uh, ask her a question. Um, Go ahead. It was so my question actually or my my comment more so i know we talked about baptisms before right uh -huh. um and i believe if i'm not mistaken when you're when you're talking about the baptism in the water it's actually the, the word of god the water is meant to be the word because remember in isaiah i think it was they were talking about how there would be a, a famine and not a famine from food but of the word and they would go um, they would just be, it would be like a dry and thirsty land, but of the word of God. So he would no longer be speaking for an extended period of time. And if he did hear a prophet and he was like, oh, the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord, you basically could put him on a stake because God said, I'm not talking to you all anymore. And I don't want, I'm washing my hands basically of you for a period of time. 
and you know he as as was told to i think ahaz um by the prophet he was like listen like there's gonna come a sign and you're gonna hear and they're gonna there's gonna be one crying in the wilderness and you're gonna be hearing you know they're gonna call him emmanuel and it's gonna be a virgin's gonna conceive and he's kind of letting him know like listen this is gonna be the sign that jesus is coming or that mm-hmm. the messiah is coming but i believe the water to be baptized into the water you have to first submit yourself to the teaching that is being presented wherein you listen to what god is saying you can't come to god unless you first believe that he is god right Mm -hmm. and so if that's the case in order to believe that he is god you must have to on some level agree with what he's saying you cannot Mm -hmm. just follow in him Mm -hmm. you can't just like um serve him without any knowledge of him right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then so after that being baptized in the water and in the spirit he gives us when we receive salvation he gives us the gift of the holy spirit uh, where it is that the bible talks about i think it's in john when he's saying listen like uh or luke actually where he's talking about if you ask of like a, a father who is mm-hmm. who is wicked mm-hmm. for a mm-hmm. fish you mm-hmm. know what what father even the worst kind is going to give his son a stone right but how many uh, uh, more so would you know how much more so would would God the Father give you of the Holy Spirit to Him yes, lack, yes, right? Yes, and yes. this is before His death that He's speaking of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Um, we know John uh, the Baptist was also filled with the Holy Spirit already mm-hmm. because of his encounter with uh, Christ when they were in the womb, right? Mm-hmm. Different yes. mothers, yes. same you know yes. uh, situation where it is that they came close basically mm-hmm. right and elizabeth was rejoicing and she's like oh yes. in my womb yes. that's what yes you yes know? yes and so there's i think the, to be born in the spirit is to come into relationship with or under uh the rule of christ or being filled with the holy spirit wherein now he can dwell inside of you and mm-hmm. you are his and you know that you are his because of mm-hmm. one you're uh, not just submitted but you're also serving at mm-hmm. that point mm-hmm. and then, you know that's that's just my that's my my memory of what it is that we had already talked about now i could be wrong obviously but i i think that's what we covered um a few months ago i want to say and then also a few years ago when we went over it the first time as far as what baptism what each baptism was because we were talking mm-hmm. about is there one or is there are there many i think mm-hmm. there's many in a sense that you could baptize yourself into whatever you feel like on that day <laughs> however where it is that there's one god and one lord and one baptism that's i think in ephesians <laughs> and Aww. for that there's only it's uh ephesians chapter four verse five where he's like there's one lord one faith one baptism Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all so where it is that christ had to be baptized he had to be baptized because he was jewish he had to be baptized because he was a high priest he had to be baptized because he was he he is uh love where it is that his love is coming in and it's you know like this perfect love which is like the fulfillment of the law he had to still fulfill the law so these things must needs be he had to come in and say okay well let me take care of the the auxiliary work of the ministry basically uh-huh. okay. um so so and I, I think i heard the yeah, other so, thing i want to say is i think i heard what's his name todd white at some point he tried to make the claim that jesus still had to be filled with the holy spirit but if he uh-huh. is God and you know God and three persons God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit there's no need for him to be filled necessarily as much as it was for the (laughs) example of him to be made among men so that men would know and be able to glorify God and say oh Mm -hmm. look that is the Christ Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back on you said a lot (laughs) okay so (laughs) sorry I've been um, mute for a little bit that's all right okay um, we're gonna go ahead oh yeah go ahead Paula go ahead can you read Ezekiel 37, 22 to um, 30? Because the cross reference that I had, some of the cross reference that I got from in terms of the water or what the water was or is mm-hmm. or what is to do, um, I got from Ezekiel the, 37? Ezekiel 37, 25 uh. 
8.30. Okay, give me just a second. Go ahead. Uh, what version are you reading, Paula? And NIV. Thanks. NIV, okay. No, NLV, New Living Translation, sorry. Oh, okay, got it, that's no, all. NLV, okay, got it. All right, give me just a second. Oops. Okay, and you said 22? 25. 25, okay. All right. Sorry, 22 if you want. <laughs> um, okay, how about I'll start from 24. My servant David will be their king and they will have um, only one shepherd. They will obey my righteousness and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I give, I gave my servant Jacob. And Wait, uh, the land, I'm sorry? You're in the Ezekiel? 37? Ezekiel 37. Okay. Am I, is there, is that the one I'm supposed to be in? 37, and you're at what, 22? Oh, 22, I'm sorry. All right, <laughs> you want me to do 22 or? Okay. Well, I wanted to start, start at 25. I'm just, well, you're reading. I don't know, I don't have what you're reading. 25? The translation. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, they will live in the land. Is that am I good so far? That I gave their servant Jacob. The land where their ancestors lived. Mm -hmm. They and their children. Am mm -hmm. I in the right spot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They and their children and their grandchildren after them will live there forever, generation after generation. And my servant David will be their prince forever. And I will make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. Mm -hmm. I will give them their land and increase their numbers. And I will put my temple among them forever. Hey, this is not what I... Okay. Where, I... Where it says... No. Huh? Mm. Wait a minute. What is going on here? <laughs> 27? <laughs> no, 37. Wait. <laughs> Wait, let her read it out of her translation where she's at. I'm, yeah, because I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> okay, let me see. Maybe I maybe I should go to another Bible. I ain't never no, seen. That's all right. Just, just, that that's different? Okay. I have therefore 22, therefore, giving the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord, I am bringing you back again, but not because you deserve it. I am doing it to protect my holy name. Mm. You dishonor while you were scattered among the nations. I will show off my, I will, I will show how holy my great name is, the name you dishonored among the nations. And when I reveal my holiness through you before their very eyes, saith the sovereign Lord, then the nations will know that I am the Lord. Mm. For I gather you up from the nations and bring you home again to your land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and mm. you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart with new and right desires and I will put a new spirit in you. Mm -hmm. Take out your stony heart of sin and give you a new obedient heart. And I will put my spirit in you so you will obey my laws and do whatever I command. Mm -hmm. And that's nope. Ezekiel 37, 25 through. Am I, am I, uh... Oh, 36 probably. <laughs> okay. 36 and let me see. Therefore, give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. I am bringing, yes, 36. Yeah, 36. When I sprinkle and clean the water on you and you mm -hmm. shall be yes, 36. Yeah, 25. Regard, what is the water? The word? In that, in that context, it sounds like the washing of the water of the word. Okay. That's what that sounds like for real. And that that's future, by the way. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. So. All right, Keith. Yes. All right. Oh, uh, let's move forward. We'll um, I, I guess we'll, we'll just put a pin in that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Big pin. Yeah, we'll just put a pin, and you know, cause um, and then uh, you know, it might be something what we could probably discuss like later on, you know, maybe after a rightly divide or something like that. Very interesting, though. Yeah. Definitely okay. something to think, talk about. Um, where am I? I don't know. Uh, getting back to why we should be openly confessing our sins before the congregation, the, the body of Christ, we're supposed to know each other. Um, and we're supposed to come clean. Everything's supposed to be above board with us. Um, there, there is, we don't have any dark, deep, dark secrets because they've all been exposed. And in, in, in the third chapter of John, it talks about how um, this is the judgment, that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than white and they would not come to the light because their deeds would be exposed. And then it goes further to say, but he who comes to light proves that his works are wrought in God. Um, that's in John, that's still yeah. part of, part of uh, the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, and um, and that thing about coming to the light that your deeds might be exposed, um, we have to absolutely openly confess that we have sinned, mm -hmm. and and um, following the example of Israel, when they went out to be baptized, they were confessing their sins, not just sin, one sin. But sins openly indicating they had a plurality in what they said they were doing wrong. Mm -hmm. When we look at the the, 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 um, the the prayer of Daniel, when he was confessing the sins of his nation, he was saying, we have done this and we have done that and we have done the other thing. And he was naming, listing, counting off the things that, and his, with himself included as an intercessory prayer lawyer, uh, the things that the, the laws that they broke against the most high God and that, and how they, um, they went back on their word and they said they were going to pay attention to him. And we, and they erected idols and worshiped idols and did so many things. And so it's the open confession of who we actually are, what we've actually done that, um, God is pleased with that because he just wants us to be honest. And 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 that was the thing about um, trying to keep the law. Trying to keep the law, you actually, you almost automatically become dishonest because you start to look bad. Hmm. Because <laughs> you ain't doing it. But everybody don't know you ain't doing it. So you start to keep up a front. And, and that kind of it messes it all up because because nobody really wants the, the, the self-preservation the thing that we have in us naturally is self-preservation and we don't want to look back mm. we we want to be successful we want to demonstrate that you know that i'm not retarded i heard you the first time yeah i can do this but no we can't do it and yes we are retarded spiritually mm-hmm <laughs> And yeah. so, yeah, and so the only reason Jesus wants us to fess up is because it it's healthy. It'd be much more healthy if we just come clean and say, yeah, I messed up. And God says, I would rather have mercy rather than sacrifice. Oh, I'm doing this. I gave that. I just, I, you know what? I, I went without food. I did all it. But you know what? Those things might look good on the outside, but it doesn't have anything to do with um, you staying clean from the sins of your flesh. Yeah, anyway, but um, but getting back to like why we should confess, the reason why is because we need to. We need to declare that we've been on the wrong side and we want to take our stand. We want to take our side with God. And the only way I can do that is to tell him, yeah, I messed up and I need you to help me clean up and once you clean me up, bring me to a fullness of repentance, 
I can be worthy of being with y'all. Um, but then now the question comes, how do you do this? Because the scripture says, um, if anyone's taken in the fall, let he who is spiritual uh, restore such a one. That mm -hmm. word restore indicates that something is out of joint. Mm -hmm. It has to be restored. It has to be set back in joint. It's been displaced. And mm -hmm. so, and it says, let him who is spiritual. And I went back and forth all week long thinking, well, the only people that I've seen in the New Testament that had that that level of spirituality where they was um, given the ability to forgive sins on earth was the apostles. Because you remember when Jesus was in that little, little, little uh, house and then the folks couldn't get the paralytic on a stretcher couldn't get to the door because of the crowd. They climbed up on the roof, went from roof to roof to roof, broke the roof where Jesus was at, lowered him down. And when Jesus seen their faith, he said, you know what? Your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. And he got in trouble for that. Well, at least they tried to put him in trouble for that. He said, who are you? You blaspheming. You can't forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. And he said that you might know that the son of man on earth has the power to forgive sins, get up and walk. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that whole issue of, uh, how could, why would I confess my sins to a human? Because, <laughs> because, because Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. The situation with sin in the, in the very first encounter with human beings and sin, it happened on the earth. And the ball has been on the earth. Um, you can't do anything. You can't get to heaven to get your sins forgiven. The church is the ground floor of God's kingdom. And the church is on this earth. And so, um, and that's why Jesus had to, his, his founding and all of his workings, the entrance therein, you get in on the earth. And so um, when, and, and that might sound a little fantastic, especially in the day and age that we live in, because you know what, who are you gonna find like that? Um, but we know that uh, when the Corinthian church had a dude in there that was sleeping with his mother or his mother, stepmother and word got out. I don't know what the Corinthian church was doing, but I think that um, they was kind of like the way we are in a way, like it's going to be all right. You know, just, you know, you know, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you know, we, um, we'll let you keep coming. Or however they was doing it, but the Paul, Paul, the apostle, he was upset. <laughs> he was upset, and he said he was so upset. He said, "What? Well, you know what? You guys are letting that go on. You know, next time y'all meet, when my spirit is in there with y'all, you deliver such a one to Satan. Just communicate him. Don't let him come back in there no more. That's the thing that." And, that, and you know, the Apostle Paul, a loving man and everything, but his attitude towards sin was, was, that was, he wasn't playing. It was no joke. And he wept over the whole situation. He was grieved by it. And, you know, and it, it stuck with him a long time. And he wrote him that letter, and it was a long letter. First Corinthians, a long letter. Mm-hmm. And he was—he had a couple of things that he was trying to reprove them on, like the, the, the taking of the Lord's Supper, that situation with that dude. Um, uh, correction. You know, all this correction. And to the point where in his second letter, he told them, yeah, I was grieved when I heard all of this and I, and I was all upset. And I was in Macedonia and um, I was upset. And because when I went to Macedonia, I couldn't find Titus. And anyway, he was going through a lot of changes emotionally. And you wouldn't think of him being an emotional person, but I believe that 
I think Christians ought to be emotional. I think we should break mm-hmm. out in song about Jesus anywhere. Mm-hmm. And, and, and but um, looking at the comparison of the two letters between the first Corinthians and the second Corinthians, um, and I, I don't know how many months or even if a year was in between them, and I should study that, but um, when he did find, catch up with Titus or Titus caught up with him, he was relieved. He was so comforted by his brother, oh, I, my brother, you know, but he was even more relieved when Titus gave him a report about the Corinthian church. He said that he was, he was um, comforted by the comfort that Titus had because Titus was a witness to the fact that, yeah, they did what you said in that letter. They made sure that they got the, um, that man up out of there. They delivered him unto Satan and he could not come back in there anymore. And, um, and they, they got all the other things straight. And, and so when, when, when Paul wrote them the second letter, he told them, you know what? I told you to do all that because I was testing you to see whether you was going to obey the things that I said. And I, I looked at those two things, which is an indication to me that the people that God has put in charge over his church, mm-hmm. we must be, we almost got to look at them and obey them like we're obeying the Lord. That that might sound really um, strange in this day and age we live in, but the character of a person that's spiritual mm-hmm. is supposed to be so genuine. It's supposed mm-hmm. to be so upright that mm-hmm. that that we don't have any choice but to respect them. And when they say do something, do it. And when and when they and and when they have a need, help them mm-hmm. because um, it it goes into the, to the chain of command that when Jesus said. He who receives me receives my father. He who receives you receives me. And Jesus' high priest, priestly prayer in the 17th chapter of John, when he's praying for his disciples to his father, and this is one of the last prayers that he actually makes, he says, and father, I don't only pray for them, but I pray for those who believe in me through their word. And and that's the only chain letter that we got from heaven to the earth. And like, we, Jesus prayed for us. Mm, yes, he does. And, and still does. But um, um, there's a chain of command because whoever you hear the gospel from, and I don't really remember who I first heard the gospel from. It's a scattered uh, group. But, but I... We all need to have people who are mentors in Christ to us. Amen. I, I really believe that. And um, I feel so um, poor in spirit in my ex- spiritual experience because I've been jumping around a lot. And so the understandings that I got, I got from studying his word as a, um, like outside of his people which, but, but I'm happy now because I'm talking to y'all. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I really need to really um, have some, some people in Christ that are faithful that I could actually be around, cling to, admire, emulate, all that. That's real. I might have to start going back to a, 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 an old church just to find them. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I don't know. I always feel unprepared when I'm talking to y'all, but uh, <laughs> that's for real. And I always depend on the Holy Spirit to talk to talk through y'all to carry this thing, because mm-hmm. that's how I believe it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, um, before um, move forward, are there any comments right now so far? I have one. Sure. Uh, the ones that I came across when we talk about confession of sin and why we should confess our sins. Uh-huh. Um, confessing our sins brings us out of the darkness into the light. Mm-hmm. Confessions out of confessing our sins once to another helps us to hold one another accountable. Mm-hmm. 
helping us to walk together. Mm -hmm. We need one another when we confess our sins. The truth is in us. Yeah. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves yeah. and we live in darkness. And then in James chapter 3, verse 16 says, confess your sins to each other and yes. pray for each other so that you may be healed. Yes. The earnest prayer of the righteous person has great power and wonderful results. Elijah was a human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for the next three and a half years. Then he prayed for rain and down it poured. The grass turned green and the crops began to grow. So basically I believe that James is telling us that, you know, when we pray for one another, when we confess our sins, mm -hmm. that it will help you to come out of the darkness mm -hmm. and walk in the light. But too many times, like we said earlier, I think on another that we have, we're so concerned about who, how we're going to be looked at mm -hmm. and who's going to. And so I do think it is really important that you do find someone that you trust. Yes. You know? And there are several ways for us to confess our sins, depending on the situation at hand, you know, where it talks, I think it was when, um, you know, you get the two elders, you go before the church, if there's, mm -hmm. you know, yes. and you so there are certain ways to do this thing, but I do know that if we continue to hide it as mm -hmm. we as we think we're hiding, mm -hmm. you know, not hiding anything from God, we're hiding it from humans, human yeah. beings. But for me, I always try to remember that we all sin, we all have our cup that we drink from, we all have the things that we struggle with in this life. Mm -hmm. and as we go through this walk, but I thank God for the saints that I know that I can go to and say, Hey, you know what? I'm struggling this. Would you please pray for me? And I think if we did more of that, we would be a lot more healthier. Yes. You know? It pertains to um, our growth in Christ and being able to witness to others and letting them know, because mm -hmm. I tell you that, you know, I am a sinner, just like you saved by grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> That's all. That's it. Thank you. Well, my my question is: Is it enough just to, you know, repent to Christ and tell Him your sins and what you did because He He knows it all, versus then confessing them to you know to someone else? Do we have? Do you have to do that, or is it is it enough for just to confess to Christ? That's my question. Well, Keisha, I think that uh, even people in the world have just have found out. That um, like when they got the AA meetings, the NA meetings, they say um, excuse me, tell God and another human being the mm -hmm. nature, the exact nature of your faults, and um, see because I got the feeling that when you just talk to God subconsciously, you kind of fool yourself mm -hmm. because and and um, I mean Jesus said. How can you claim to love God who you can't see and yet you hate your brother who you see all the time? Mm -hmm. It's something about um, putting things out there on a human level that uh, it, 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 it's kind of a um, <clears throat> fail safe. It's like if you're clean with God, so why not? be open with other human beings. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like it's a, it's, you're still hiding. It seems like you're still hiding mm -hmm. when you can't be 100% honest with someone who's supposed to be in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I kind of like to add to that because it's like um, scripture has always talked to us about um, he who dwells in the shelter of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Mm -hmm. God will hide us he will continuously hide us and he will continue to protect us. He will always make sure that, um, and he's done it many, many times before where he's um, hidden things from other people. But the thing is, is that there comes to a point in time when he's like, look, in order for you to move forward, you got to be healed. Mm -hmm. So this thing has to be exposed. Right. So when he, when he um, exposes people, I think it's only, I think it's by his grace and his mercy. He's like, look, 
you can't move forward until you confess this thing. Mm. So since you haven't confessed it, I'm going to have to do it for you. Mm. You know, I have to, you know, and that's why he, he gives us those, those, um, those guidelines when it comes to confession of sins, like go to your brother, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and that, and, and when you go to your brother, when you, when there's an offense, it's like, okay, there's an opportunity for you to confess, to say, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's, it's like it, it, the confession allows you to be humble, mm-hmm. to say that I am not, I, um, I am not as holy as I make myself out to be. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not, none of us are holy and righteous and unless we have, you know, given everything that we have to the Lord. It's like only the Lord makes us righteous. Only the Lord makes us holy. And so, but the, but the confession, he's like, yeah, I'll hide it, but it's going to be more healing for you to confess it to another person who looks like me, Mm. you know, because there's this exposure and I was watching a um, a series one time where this con- where this politician or this guy he was running for office and he, all of his dirty secrets were about to be brought to light and they wanted him to drop out of the race or else they were going to reveal all of these um, negative things about him mm-hmm. and so right up to the point where he was, and he had the letter written out and everything, and right at the last moment, he decided, you know what? I'm just going to put it all out there. And he says, I, I'm. this is what I did. This is who I am. And I'm just going to ask the, the city or the people, like, because I'm pretty sure if we look behind the closed door, some of you guys got some pretty, some pretty crazy stuff going on too. But he says, it's like, and I think that's it. It's like when we confess with, to one another, especially when someone's confessing some, you know, some of the most craziest things to us, we have to understand if all of our closets were to be open, what would we see? Mm-hmm. What would we actually see? You know, and so after he confessed, he's like, you know, it's kind of like a weight being lifted because what do you have on me now? Such now I have the freedom. I have the liberty to, you mm-hmm. know, to worship freely because it's already out there. There's nothing else. It's like, there's nothing that you don't really have anything on me. This mm-hmm. is it. This is all of it. <laughs> what else can you do to me? It gives you freedom. It gives you freedom. And, you know, uh, Galatians 6 says it. Um Right, let's go to Galatians 6 really quick. Right. Okay. Galatians 6. Oh, goodness. My Bible is falling apart. <laughs> okay, Galatians 6. And what, um, what um, you I mean, what verse? One. Six, First one. one. Okay, go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Oh, it says, dear friends, if a Christian is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. Mm-hmm. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Mm-hmm. Share each other's troubles and problems. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone in need, you are only fooling yourselves. You are already a nobody. Mm. (laughs) Straight up, you're a nobody. Straight up. (laughs) What what verse was that, Paula? Huh? What verse was that? I'm sorry. Uh, Galatians. Galatians 6, verse. Three that says, if you think you are too important to help somebody in need, you are fooling yourself you are you are really a nobody yeah okay be that's, sure that's to, be sure to do what you should for them you will enjoy the personal satisfaction of having done your work well mm. and you need to compare yourself to anyone else for we each are 
responsible for our own conduct. Those yeah. who are taught the word of God should help their teachers by, okay, that's a whole nother thing. But yeah. it's like you were saying, Chris, about um, in Matthew 18, where it talks about going, you know, it, there's so many scenarios in Matthew, it talks about what to do if there's something in the church, you need to bring someone before the church. You mm -hmm. know, uh, there were scriptures that talked about what we should do individually. So everything is in here that, and as it pertains to us in sin, as mm -hmm. how we should deal with it. The, the question now becomes, are we going to be obedient to that? And so that's it. That's what I have. Mm. All right. well, that's very good so what are the steps you confess your sins to Christ well I, think, well I think we always confess our sins to Christ because he already knows so you're not hide you're not you know what I mean you're not it's yeah. for you but not for but, yeah, but to confess our sins does not only helps you it could help someone else and that's what he's saying mm -hmm. if you withhold these things okay Someone out there needs to know that you too are struggling with sin. Mm -hmm. Someone needs to know that because too many times I've had so many, my friends, oh, Kapala, can you pray to God for me? Because I know he hears you because you're closer to him. No, mm -mm. Don't <laughs> right. Right. That, right. you would, okay. You can talk to him just like I can, but if they don't know that, or they think that, you know, because you, uh, you know, we, 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 we portray ourselves that we, we, we act godly and we, and we say the right things, but at the same time, they also need to know we are fallible. We are not mm -hmm. perfect, okay? Because when they see you fall, what do most people say? Uh, well, you're supposed to be so holier than thou or whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. But if we're honest with the Lord and we're honest with other people, you will have that problem, you know? And then yeah, and also they'll they'll you know when they say things oh well I know you can get a praise it's like look I'm fallible too so if by them knowing that you're fallible it's like look you can get a prayer through just as much as I can all you have to do is be open and honest with the one that has that that created you mm -hmm. and so because that's that's because that's the only difference between you and I is that I've mm -hmm. taken the time to say yeah I'm 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 I got a whole lot of crap in my in my in my in my closet, and I need to say I need you to help me with this. That's the only that's the only difference between a sinner and a saint is like being able to confess, <clears throat> and not only to the Most High who already knows, as you said, but being able to tell each other, "Look, I'm battling this," because that's where we draw strength. Mm -hmm. That's where we draw our strength, and so that person won't be able to say, "Well." Well, Paula, can you pray for me? Because I know you can get a prayer through. It's like, no, I'll pray, pray with you. Yeah, I'll pray I'll with pray. you. I'll because pray with then, you. <laughs> yeah, I'll pray with you. Because the thing is, is that mm. you can get a prayer through as well. Mm -hmm. Have you confessed him as your Lord and Savior? If you've done that, then you you too can, um, can get a prayer through. And I believe that the confession also, as you said, frees us up to be able to do the, the work of the Lord. I think many, re I think one of the reasons why the church hasn't thrust forward because we have a whole lot of hidden sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's that's my that's my two cents. Is oh, that what you say, Chris? The church has a what? That's like what you say? I think they have a whole. Um, I think that there's a lot of hidden sin. That's why they're not what? I believe that that's one of the reasons why the church is not moving forward is because uh -huh. of the hidden sin. Everybody's trying to as you know we were saying bring up you know put up this front like hey we got it all together when mm -hmm. in actuality that's not the case and everything is uh, falling apart yeah <laughs> and you know it's just like stand. it's kind of like um you know you know hiding all that stuff it's kind of like um building up there's a lot of pressure you know at some point you keep bottling all that stuff up you're gonna burst and it's mm -hmm. not gonna be good when all that stuff you know comes out it's, not, it's 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 going to be bad. it's going to look bad. I mean, we saw it with the um with the Church of God in Christ, and we saw it with the um with the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. you know, hiding it so much to where it's like once that thing um finally um blows up, it I mean it blows up big, you know. Mm -hmm. 
because there wasn't, um, you know, because the sin wasn't dealt with, you know, the sin wasn't brought to the light. It, you know, it was just swept under the rug and because, because of positions and because of, you know, they wanted to maintain certain control and power. Now they place themselves in a much more precarious situation than before. And, and it just going to build up and build up and build up and build up. And then once one thing gets exposed, then everything uh, gets exposed. That's happening. The, the, the dark comes to light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The dark will come into light. Um, I want to just pause. Uh, Brianna had her hand up. Go ahead, Brianna. I'm sorry. Oh, that was actually the little applause handsy things because I was I was agreeing with you for what you were saying. Oh. But oh, okay. I do I did want to um, also kind of I guess kind of respond as well to Keisha the question that you had. Like um, I agree with everything that said, and I think what it would kind of look like if you look back in because I guess it sounds like you guys already covered it Matthew eighteen, um, mm -hmm. where it is that you have like the question of like restoring a brother. This one is like if somebody offends you, right? But if mm -hmm. if someone sins, we'll say period, right? If there's a sin because you're restoring someone. Um, so if you start at verse 18, it says, <clears throat> and this is from like the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Um, it says, I assure you, whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is already loose in heaven. Again, I assure you, uh, if if two, and so this is the part that you would want to want to do um, in verse nineteen. It says, uh, if two of you on earth agree about any matter that you pray for, it will mm -hmm. be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. I am there among them. And so um, what it gives you, I think, is the opportunity, not just like where the healing comes in. I think it's not just to say, okay, now I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't feel bad about it anymore. And now it's exposed. Where the healing part comes in is in the binding of the thing. So let's say you're, uh, I'll go for myself. I, um, for a very long time, my, my, uh, the sin that I dealt with on a regular basis had to do with my lust and that I, you know, regularly had to deal with. Right. And it was, um, my flesh in that area. I sinned all the time, <laughs> all of the time. That was my issue. And so when I, uh, confessed my sin to a friend of mine, um, prayer partner of mine, we then prayed about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, because we were, we're both believers, we prayed by faith, um, asking God to help deliver me. So one, deliver me from that thing. And then also two, to bind up whatever it was in me, if it was a spirit, if it was an issue of just my flesh, where my flesh was, you know, I don't know, still just being able to do what it wanted to, right? Like if I, mm -hmm. if I just decided instead of um, dying to myself or um, taking on the responsibility as a Christian that says, I don't get to do it anymore because I'm saved. Even though I have the ability to, I don't get to anymore. Um, whatever it might be, if it's the mindset that I'm keeping, if it's the attitude, if it's the people, if it's whatever it is, bind that thing up praying that God would bind it up and then free me from it um, so that I don't find myself uh, stuck in that space anymore or find myself going through that cycle again. So that yeah. if it is that lust comes up again, I can say, well, no, um, <laughs> God, God freed me from that. And that thing, that lust is bound up because God, uh, God allowed it to be bound up since we prayed and that thing is bound. So it's no longer something that's attached to me. I'm not claiming that as my own anymore. And mm -hmm. I cling on to, or I hang on to the freedom that I have in Christ Jesus that says that I'm free and not left to just have to deal with continuing to sin in that area anymore. And if I sin, obviously God is faithful and he'll forgive me, but I don't have to, have that shame that comes with it because I've already 
confess out loud and I've already repented of it and I've already mm-hmm. asked God to deliver me from it. Does that, uh, does that make sense? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what then happens when you have somebody who is dealing with the same type of thing, like, you know, like lust, and, you know, let's just say it, it, you know, you were able to get through it, no problem, but they're having a difficult time dealing with it. What, what do we do as believers, you know, because right. I've, I've heard believers like, you know, you should just be able to just stop. You should be, or you should be able to just do what I did. <laughs> what are we doing that? What do we what do we do then as believers? We pray. We continuously pray. Because Nothing like it, is different and everybody's not the same. And it's harder for some people to give up certain sin than it is for others. And you know, you just ask God to help give you direction in what you can possibly do something different that may help this person see you know but I think our our best you know result our best defense against that is just to continuously pray for that person Mm -hmm. I think it kind of goes into what you were um into what you were reading uh what scripture was that it was that Galatians six yeah yeah because there's going to come a time I believe in every believer's life there's going to come a time where you're going to have the opportunity of um, dealing out the same type of grace that was given to you. Amen. Yeah. The um, and and that's the agape love that God talks about um, so so much in His Word. Um, we always wonder how God, how can you, you know, how can God save a murderer? How can God save a pedophile? How can God? Mm-hmm. It's like we don't know the story, you know, because mm-hmm. as we all will agree is that we were born into sin. And, you know, we don't know what a person's life um, path was like that made them become a murderer or made them become a pedophile or made them mm-hmm. become okay. um, an abuser. Mm-hmm. We don't know the story. We have mm-hmm. no idea what brought them to that, to that place. And God is saying, even I can, I can even, if I can forgive them, you mm-hmm. should be able to forgive them as well. Not only that, God intercedes for us, does he not? Yes, he does. He intercedes. Does. So, so we, go ahead. Yeah so, when, yeah, so when we have a pastor, like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, that falls from the path, it's like, yeah, we, we, there are steps that we need to take. It's like, okay, brother, we have to sit you down. You know, we need you to deal with this thing. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that you're going to be excommunicated, but since you have taken the time to say, yes, I have done this thing. Yes, I have. Okay, there's going to be some consequences. But because we we understand that we ourselves were saved by grace and there's probably some things that we were able to get away with or there was some probably some, you know, life could have taken us a totally different direction. And we could have made some decisions that are probably end up, you know, that are probably make us end up in the same situation you are. We have to be, we have to keep that in check. We have to understand we were, we're one, you know, every single one of us is one decision away from being in jail. Mm -hmm. One decision Mm -hmm. away from being, you know, dead. One decision from making, from being excommunicated from, from, you know, from family and friends and things like that. We're just one decision away, you know, but God protects us and God keeps us because if, and I, I, I can, um, and I know I don't speak for myself when I say that there were some times where I could have made a decision that could totally change the trajectory of my life, mm-hmm. you know, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure all of you can think of those moments where it's like, if I had done this, I would not be in the situation that I am in today, you know, and it's one thing that we should be mindful of at all times, because, you know, especially when it comes to restoring someone else, you know, but as we said, there are steps. We need to be serious about this thing. We, it's like, we don't want you to come in and, and taint what it is that we're, you know, you can't come in and taint the church 
if your intentions are not to, if your intentions aren't good, if your intention is to come in and just kind of um, and infect the church, then we need to protect it at all costs, you know. And and if you're not willing to expose your, if you're not willing to expose your sin, um, then we have to, you know, there has to be a question of what, what, ha okay, actually what happens? What happens when we, we have a person that's not willing to expose the sin? You know, they still want to be a part of the fellowship, but they're having a hard time confessing to a, another person or to you or to anyone. I think that portion ends up depending upon whether or not they are actively pursuing that sinful nature, that sinful thing, okay. or if it is a thing that had them bound at one point, had them stuck at one point, they received the forgiveness from Christ, deliverance from Christ. And then after the fact, it's like, I don't think personally, unless you are going to testify and the Lord prompts you in your spirit to say, okay, talk about that specific thing. I don't think there's a need to go do like a tell all book and say, these are all of the things I've ever done in my life because <laughs> you have to, at some point consider what would be the fruit of that. Right. So if a person is willfully sinning um, or I think what's the other term, like woefully sinning, mm. um, if, if explain, they, explain that one. It's woefully sinning. Woefully sinning. So there's there's portions in the Bible where it talks about uh, uh, the woes, where it's like the more extreme version <clears throat> of like the terror of God or the wrath of God, right? There's there's these moments where it's like this is a woeful experience. It is a it is the worst possible way that it could ever in the most ugliest sense end it, it this is a it's a it's like having somebody step up just to say bad very very loudly because the consequence it's like imminent you know this thing here it's how do i lord help it's like to woefully sin is to intentionally sin i'll say it that way to woefully sin is to intentionally sin it is to say um i am a married woman um, I know that I am also a Christian woman. I'm going to sleep with someone who is not my husband on purpose. And that is going to be my, my relation that I will maintain and also apparently try and maintain relationship with my husband. That is a woeful sin. It's <laughs> woeful because I know for a fact that it is adultery. I know for a fact that it is a sin. It is a thing that will lead me only to destruction. And yet, is that like King David. Yes, mm -hmm. he was. I think more so in his ego or in his pride. So he wasn't looking at it that way until the prophet uh, came to him and kind of mm -hmm. you're the man a little bit. Because if we're in our own heads and we're just like, I do what I want, you know, <laughs> then mm -hmm. we can we can woefully sin. We can we can sit there and do a thing, whether out of pride. Or, you know, maybe there's certain things that we have not uh, confessed or surrendered to God in prayer by ourselves that, uh, that become these things that keep us bound. We become servants to those things. We become a slave to those types of sins where we want to do good. We want to be right. Mm. We want to please God. And yet, because we are kind of cradling this this bomb <laughs> we 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 won't let it go we know that it's going to explode and we're just like nope i'm keeping it and it's mine and god is like listen i can i can free you from this at least tell somebody and you're like no i'm gonna keep it and mm -hmm. that's a woeful sin it's just deliberate no good can even remotely come of this and yet you do it anyway so mm -hmm. if it's if it's someone who's trying to hide a sin that they're woefully committing, I think that takes you into what what would Jesus do more so, where they deliver such an one, they remove them right after after bringing it up in the congregation and trying to talk about it. Like if you don't want to listen to me, listen to me and my brother. If you don't want to listen to me and my brother, listen to me, and my brother, and the entire congregation. You don't want to listen to all of us. You have to be removed. Um, for Paul, I think he talks about it like, um, 
deliver such an one to Satan, right? So that where their body may be destroyed, at least their at least their soul might be spared, right? At least if you let them go and 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 let God have his way with them, basically. You you surrender them to Christ and say, you know what? They they can't stay here because they're they're doing this on purpose. They're doing this intentionally. They have no desire to stop. And Lord, you you, you have to get them. And someone so, I think would yeah, go ahead. And I'm just wondering, so what about the person who has the desire to stop, but just can't well, that's, seem to that's the beautiful part about who Christ is because mm -hmm. it, with man it's already impossible <laughs> like it's, he says it very clearly it's just like his disciples when they heard him teaching they were like man who can who can do this this is impossible he's like you're right like it is impossible with man it's absolutely 100 percent impossible mm -hmm. but with christ with god all things are possible he makes yeah. it possible mm -hmm. um the the bible that my husband has this uh home and christian standard on the bottom of it it gives the little what are they like the captions the the what are those things called when when it's like the commentary the commentary thank you on the bottom so it says uh c note 1619 uh talking about matthew chapter 18 um mm -hmm. when it talks about like binding things and loosing things right so jesus delegated authority to the church and its leadership to open access open access to the kingdom like the kingdom of god so open access to the kingdom of god um and so to forgive or to retain sins in the context of the gospel so mm -hmm. in regards to you know the gospel of jesus christ right to mm -hmm. discipline members and to render doctrinal decisions so there's certain things that the body of Christ has been given authority to do. Christ gave it to us. And if we have access to the kingdom of God um, and there is someone who is struggling and they do confess and they're like, listen, I, I, you know, maybe I, I defile my body every single day with whatever that insert is, right? Like I smoke, I drink, I, you know, I, I have a perverse mouth or whatever mm -hmm. it may be. I'm crazy lustful and can't seem to close my eyes to the world, right? Help. Okay. The way to help is by the body of Christ. Those who, um, who are not overcome in that same sin, mm -hmm. those who are, uh, I'll say strong in that area, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody is weak in one area or another, but they may be strong in that area. They mm -hmm. can go through the power of the Holy Spirit and pray and access that authority that God has given to all believers in Christ, to the leadership in Christ, uh, in, in the kingdom of God, to the, the, the members of the body of Christ who are choosing to be disciples of his word. They can access the kingdom of God and say, okay, let's restore you and pray that God covers you mm -hmm. and be patient with you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the time that you are delivered because there's there's no way to be delivered except to be delivered it's more accepting it's more believing you have to you have to really um what is it it's like the difference between salvation and uh sanctification meaning that you 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 got saved so like a, like a t-shirt that was purchased at a store you got saved you've been redeemed, right? You've been purchased, but let's say there's like 15 different stains on this t-shirt. So you got, you got purchased at a discount price or you were, somebody paid top dollar for you. And here it is, you're dirty. They knew you were dirty when they bought you, but they still have to clean you off. So mm -hmm. that's going to take time. Don't assume that a shirt that was purchased dirty is going to all of a sudden be clean. It takes time. You have to scrub some stuff out. Mm -hmm. some stuff through fasting and praying, most all of it comes through the Holy Spirit and the submitting ourselves daily to the word of God, the Bible, the, um, the being still in the presence of God, uh, or if you're not sure what the presence of God feels like, being still, thinking about 
the Lord, thinking about the Bible, praying and opening your heart and saying, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, here I am. I pray that you would uh, show me how to be closer to you. Teach me. You just, you, be, you begin a relationship by literally just beginning the relationship. You begin the conversation and then you continue right. knowing that Christ hears you and Unlike anybody else, he has zero shame. He's he's literally the one that's standing in the gap saying, nah, I'm covering them. And he he died for you and I and all of us while we were still in sin anyway. So what really <laughs> like he already knew we were sinners. You know mm-hmm. that? So, he pay, paid the price he knew we were sinners. He already took us anyway. He's like, I'll take them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, I don't I don't know if that helps. No, know. that's that what you what you oh, presented good. was app, was application. That was oh. application. And, <clears throat> you know, and that's that's what's needed. Application, mm-hmm. you know, in in all of these different scenarios and making sure that again that we are restoring each other and helping one another because the the battle is never over. Mm-mm. As long as we are in this body, mm-hmm. it's we are going that. to be battling sin. So the the need for confession becomes that much greater. You know, mm-hmm. we are constantly going. You know, so we may we may overcome one thing, but there's going to be another thing. I mean, the, I mean, the devil ain't you know going to stop. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not going right. to stop. But I think it's one of those things where as we as we continue to keep overcoming. Um, then you know the devil then he has to change a tactic it's like okay I can't come at you straightforward with this anymore because this just doesn't seem to work you know and I think you know the temptation of Christ gave us a great example of you know how the devil you know he'll tempt you to where it's like okay this is the best I can do to tempt you and you overcame my you basically took my best shot and you still did not did not bend. So I know I can't I can't do that anymore. But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to stop trying. I may not be able to go through you um, straightforward in this area. But then maybe I'll come at you with somebody else, mm-hmm. and then try to get you to become so self righteous and prideful, thinking that you already know that you you know since I can't come at you, you know directly you've overcome you are more than a conference so now you you you're flexing your faith muscle saying i got this so then but i then i bring somebody into your um um, across to you and then you become self-righteous and presumptuous and prideful and then you fall into then you fall into that that sin that you fall into vanity you fall into pride you fall into self you know all those things and you don't even realize it sometimes Oh yeah. So, uh, you know, sometimes we don't even realize when we fall into that category of um self-righteousness and pride. You know, and that's one of the and that's and that's what you call a sneak attack. You mm-hmm. know, enemy. You know, we're thinking everything is good. It's like, oh, I don't have any of these problems. I'm not addicted to drugs, I'm not doing this. And then we become that Pharisee, we become that um the teacher of the law that goes into the um mm-hmm synagogue and says well lord i tithe you know i give everything i can to i do all this i do xyz and i'm not like this tax collector over here right but sinning is could be worry we worry or you complain or Mm -hmm. there's the little things that we do that we don't realize that are that sin you know Mm -hmm. complaining is a sin worrying is a sin um you know just um you know having bad thoughts and is a sin or just the Mm -hmm. things that we do on the day they basis thinking that you know we just go through our out our day and we're complaining about certain things and we don't even realize it or um i know for me i didn't realize i was at unforgiveness in my heart until the word of god showed me mm-hmm. it was just like oh my gosh okay right. so yeah. i thank the lord for the word of god because he does chastise us but my thing was i was just i just had a thought that you know, when you are a Christian and you know better mm-hmm. and then the person like, you know, if your spouse or a friend or uh, your children or whatever, and they don't know 
and they could be sinning and don't even know it, but you know, when mm -hmm. you do it, you're more accountable yeah. for what you know in yeah. your sin. And mm -hmm. even though they're doing it too, they don't, they don't know. They have not been, sometimes they have not been, um, you know, the spirit has not chastised them or come to them because if you have to be seeking the Lord, I, I believe in order for the Lord to chastise you, you have to be reading your word in order for him to convict you. And, and when those conviction times do happen, I know, I know we all said, I'm so sorry, Lord, you know, I don't mm -hmm. want to do this. Like Paul says, he finds himself doing the things that he doesn't want to do, you know, but then he finds mm -hmm. himself doing those things, you know? So, um, that because of his, because of the Lord's blood, you know, he paid the price, but I was just thinking that you're more, you know, you're more responsible, you you have more, more accountable um, for it than the person that is, doesn't even, don't even know. Right. And they're doing that and they don't even realize what's going on. So mm -hmm. yeah. I think one cool thing to think about is, uh, is a word. I don't know if you ever watched, if any of you have ever watched the show Friends. Mm -hmm. Um. That's like one of my favorite shows. I'm just going oh, really? to every now and then. <laughs> my sister's husband loved that show. I never understood it, but I, <laughs> I can't. yeah, but it was like there was a there was an episode where um, <laughs> I think his name is Ross. Yeah, where, where Ross was buying a couch, right? And it's mm -hmm. just this oversized, massive thing. And he lives in a New York apartment, and there's no there's mm -hmm. no elevator that they can take to get up the stairs. Mm -mm. Well, they, I, I remember that episode. episode. And yeah. Right. And so they're going up this, it obviously has every single turn on the way. And while he's trying to go up, they're good for a minute. And then he says, pivot. <laughs> pivot, pivot, pivot. <laughs> hey, please think about think about our walk with the Lord and imagine the Holy Spirit is literally there saying, pivot the entire way up because we can't <laughs> make it. Mm -hmm. You see it? We can't we right. can't make it going one way. And even sometimes it might be good for a moment, but then we have to pivot. And mm -hmm. when he when he when he quickens us, when he when he um when he puts something in our spirit to uh, adjust to the mm. to the area, the direction that he's calling us to, it's our responsibility to then say, Okay. Otherwise, <laughs> I don't know if you remember what ends up happening in the in the little show that episode, he ends up like cutting it in half. Why? Right. <laughs> On the way, you can't go it your way. Even if it's comfortable mm -hmm. for a moment, at some point, we all have to pivot. And we think, you know, this is the angle. I'm good at this angle. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, sure. You you may not deal with, like, my, my grandfather, he used to have a, um, I think it was like a heroin addiction. And he would always testify about, like, uh, how his, his, uh, his former, like, before he became, uh, someone who was delivered and got saved, he would talk about how, you know, he would, you know, speedball and he would do all this stuff and he was selling drugs and he was a pimp and all of these other things. But then when the Lord called him, he changed his appetite. He, mm -hmm. he was allowed to have that type of deliverance where he didn't have to go backwards. It doesn't mean that he didn't still have other areas of, of issue. Cause I have like nine aunts and uncles that I'd like, <laughs> So there's there's a reality that just because in one area you get delivered, it doesn't mean that every other area is just completely gone and you know perfect. Oh, no. You we we grow. We're constantly growing, constantly experiencing different areas of life. And if I've never experienced what you know the world's most attractive alcohol is, I may not know that I could possibly become an alcoholic. I've never tasted mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? Like oh yeah. So, and it's, we don't know, like, uh, like brother Chris, like what you said, like, we don't know what prompts people to do certain things. We only know from our side of the street, like, this is what it looked like for me. Mm -hmm. And then I was stuck for like seven, seven, 10 years, 50, however long it is. And right. when we're delivered, it's like, oh, thank God. Mm -hmm. And imagine confessing that where seven to 10 years of your life, like a prison sentence is now gone. Right. And like they're just like okay now pivot some more because there's other stuff that's coming it's just another corner it's just another area and mm -hmm. we can just lay god's grace over in that area because you know we know that he's covering us with his grace for certain areas right his um because what does paul say he's like oh oh wretched man that i am who's going to deliver me from the body of this 
you know, this death and God is like, listen, my, my grace is sufficient. <laughs> so, um, for your weakness, so you, you may be weak. It may be hard to cut that corner to sit there and maybe put the fork down. Cause you're a little bit gluttonous maybe, or mm-hmm. to sit there mm-hmm. and turn off the TV. Cause you now have idolatry and you stare at the TV or Facebook or whatever my personal video game on my phone is like you, you, <laughs> You know, like there, there may be an area wherever it is. Just pivot, put put Christ in it, and just whoop, let me and let me tell somebody so they can help me turn. Amen, amen. Um, well, the time is now. Seven yeah, after thank God. What did you say? <laughs> thank God for what? Hello. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> what did you say? I said, thank God for the sinful nature because without it, we would need him, right? Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I said Connor a, uh, <laughs> So the time is now eight after eight. Um, um two hours just goes by so quick, it's just it's crazy. But, um, he kind of continue. Right. Are he finished? Are he gonna continue well, next? Yeah, week? I I thought there was some more material that you know you wanted to present. Um dad was there a school. Was there something else? I, I I know we touched on a little bit um, of it yesterday. I was wondering, did you kind of want to go in depth with that? Actually, I, I was allowing the spirit to do what he always does, and that's like let let like he speaks through all of y'all all the mm-hmm. time, and like at some point, I just begin to listen to the things and um, that's coming out of everybody's um, heart, and like. What struck me the most is, uh, and I forget who said it, but in actuality, basically what they said was what Jesus told us to do. He said, teach, uh, teach, make disciples of all men, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And like mm-hmm. um, a lot of times we don't hear the command of Jesus say, um, sin no more, that something worse might, not, might befall you. Um, but he does say that and he does command that. And um, a lot of times, because we don't, we are not, at least I know I've not been discipled like I see um, the first century church discipling others. I don't see us being sent out two by two like I see how he sent his disciples out two by two. And that was important because if two of y'all agree on anything, then you can have anything you want according to my will. And so I, I look at the, the structure of how we do what we do. And I said, if we ever get the structure intact, Mm -hmm. um, we're on automatic pilot because he's like you said, praying for us all the time now. And um, the Holy Spirit is guiding us into all truth now. Uh, Mm -hmm. And he's got all time in his hand. So I don't know if I'm trying to rush it or I'm dragging my feet, but it's all in his will. It's all what he does. And we praise God for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yeah. Um, um, so, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at the screen and I'm seeing six people and I'm wondering how close we are to one another. I, I know as y'all was talking, I said, I got to I got to team up with Chris because my question to all of y'all is, is this an assembly? Yes. OK, <laughs> good. And so my question is. Are we paired up two and two at least? <laughs> Just well, a question. I, well, I know I'm hooked up with you, brother. So, I know uh, that's right. And I can't <laughs> wait to talk with you because we got confessions going on. Right, soon. Exactly. Yeah. And because I don't want I don't want the lump to be leavened. Mm-hmm. I want this lump to be unleavened. I want to celebrate the Passover with unleavened bread. Man. And and you know what I mean? Um, because <laughs> Our Paschal Lamb has been sacrificed outside the gate. We'll talk about that some other time. Amen. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, a couple of things I want to talk about. Um, Dad, um, I would like you to, that part that we were talking about uh, yesterday when it came to the flesh. Yes. Um, could we kind of go maybe like the first half of the um, of next week? Maybe kind of, you know, can we kind of touch on that really quickly? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, import- the importance of the... Um, Having a body having a body exactly yes, yes. All right. and then also um uh one other one everyone know um 
if there's ever a time that you want to, you know, just kind of talk about um, the the upcoming um, the upcoming uh, subject to or topic, um, Brianna is available throughout the week. Um, so, um, Brianna, can you do me a favor and just kind of put your number on the chat so that people can get it, if that's possible? Um, I can, but I thought we were using the uh, the Google Classroom. Yeah, oh, I thought right. we were using yeah. the Classroom. Yeah, you know what? That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, use the Google Classroom. And then, um, yeah, so, you know, so anyone has any questions in regards to that, uh, Brianna is going to be, Brianna's available uh, through the week. So um, go ahead and use Google Classroom if you have any questions. Well, how do uh, I don't know how to do that. How do I do that? Uh, Rachel, are you? Do there? I put in her? What do I do? Just ask a question? <laughs> oh, yeah. You can just put it in the comments or you can um, just answer the question how you normally do. I think before you were like submitting a document, but you don't even need to submit a document to answer the question. You can just type in your answer and, okay. um, and, uh, and they get it right away and then can write like respond who gets it right away everybody like does and brianna does everybody sees it okay, so they can it's like a little chat okay yeah. so so basically brianna was okay I, I so now we're going we're doing it through google instead of calling her is that what we're doing yeah we're just we're going to do it through google um but um Ooh. i guess yeah it's just guys, a way if you want to set something up i don't know i don't know if brianna's it's open just to that. a way sure. to oh sorry I was just gonna say, it's just a way to kind of chat during the week and okay. just get your initial thoughts out there. And um, people are just kind of making comments and mm -hmm. um, just putting out their thought. Okay. And then you get other people's thoughts. It's kind of okay. cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And also too, if you if you do want my phone number, I can um let me let me just put it in there. No, baby, I have it. I just didn't know. Oh, I know okay. I know that you had given certain times that you were available that you could, could call, but um, mm -hmm. if we can, if we want to put it in the classroom, that's fine. I could do that. I'll figure okay. it out. Well, um, so the reason why it would be in the in the classroom, well, this where where it ended up being a little bit easier is so that we can all kind of uh, have a continuous conversation. So let's say maybe um, I know for me, I have three little ones here, and so I'm not always able to. Uh, kind of log into the classroom and type something in at 11, but I am able to log in and kind of see, hey, has anyone said anything on there? And so I can respond and then we can kind of have a continuous conversation. And if anybody else is wanting to communicate as well and say, hey, you know what, the Lord put this on my spirit or you know what, I was wondering about this or right. whatever it may be, we're all able to uh, kind of join in on the same topic conversation throughout right. the week so that it's not just you having this one thought and it goes all week and then hopefully you remember or maybe you can find that one piece of paper that you wrote it on uh, right. by the time Sunday comes. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, because I didn't know we were going on this tonight. I thought we the question was can one choose to be a slave and so I could write that in the comments, right? Mm -hmm. Your answer and then you guys will answer me back. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you want you want to talk about that bit? Yeah. Um, so yes, and sorry, I sent that email out, but um, but I was a little ahead of myself there because we never really met last week. Um, so um, so I sent the one about choosing to be a slave. Um, so that's something Aziza gonna, is she's gonna um, facilitate that. Um, I was gonna say the next time we meet, but it sounds like we're going to continue this. Yeah, I, I want us to be. I want okay. us to be able to exhaust every subject. Um, I want to, you know, I, I, you know, if it takes our, if it, if it, if we have to take our time, then you know, let us take our time. Um, and I want to give each subject the the respect that it deserves, and each person the opportunity to um, yeah. talk everything through. Um, so I like us because there was something that. Um, we talked about the importance of a body that goes on with that goes along with confession that I want us to just kind of maybe touch on just for a little while. It doesn't have to be for the long, for the whole session, just for a little while. Um, and then um, if the Lord says the same, we'll go ahead and get started with um, Aziza 
and her topic. Does that does that sound okay? okay? Does that sound good yeah. to everyone? Or okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and then, of course, Aziz will have all the time that necessary for her to go through her topic as well. Okay. okay. All right. So, uh, thank you for joining, Dad. Thank you. Excellent. You know, um, I, you know, I truly believe we've gotten a, a really good, um, in-depth look at what confession is all about. And I'd like us to again not just be hearers of the word, but let's be doers of the word. Absolutely. And, amen. So, um, if someone could close us out. And then we can say our goodbyes. Um, oh, so. we're well, gonna talk about having a body. Why did I write that down? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're uh, we're gonna uh, tomorrow, uh, next week. We're gonna be talking about um, what it means to have a body and and how that um, and how that is <laughs> and how that and what it and and how that is. Um, uh, why are you laughing? Oh, and what, how does that fit in regards to confession? <laughs> Actually, uh, the scripture that y'all can look up and look at it and figure it out throughout the week until that happens is um, Jesus was went to the went to the cross. It says in Hebrews that he went he went outside the gate. He suffered outside the gate. And if you can look at the context in Hebrews about that and come up with the real deal about what that means. Then you understand why we have to have a body. Okay. Right. What's um Hebrews what? Oh, is it nine? I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me find it. All right. Uh, hold on. Okay. While we're looking for that, quick question. So we are going to wrap up this discussion next week, and we're going to include the body and mm -hmm. Aziz is going to start next week as well or the following week? Uh, I would say next, next week, week is next, next week, week yeah. as well. Yeah. It's Hebrews 13. Uh, seven through something. <laughs> oh we'll just say Hebrews 13. Just say yeah. Hebrews 13. Yeah. And, and put, um, put the phrase outside the gate. There we go. All right. Um yeah so um, Brother Keith will be wrapping up and Sister Aziza will be starting. Absolutely. I ain't afraid to pray. You want me to pray? Absolutely. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your, your presence. And we thank you, O oh Lord God, that you had everyone that participated to participate. We thank you so much that you are a gracious God and you are a forgiving God. We thank you, O oh Lord God, that you um, gave yourself, suffered and bled and died on our behalf, O oh Lord God, um, experienced such shameful treatment from sinners uh, and, and, and didn't utter a word. And mm. we thank you, O oh Lord God, for that. And we ask, O oh Lord God, that you would be with us throughout the times that we're um, separated one from another and that you continue to speak to us, speak to our hearts and grant, O oh Lord God, that we would... Um, experience the joy of your salvation and the freedoms of being forgiven of sin. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Continue to love God and love each other. All right. Go in peace. God bless. God bless. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You know, this, this is that funny moment when you're saying bye and nobody wants to leave just yet, just in case anybody <laughs> sits at the end of the movie. It's like, is there another thing? The movie? <laughs> <laughs> like the adventures, they always have something right. at the end. All exactly. The comic books. Exactly. Okay. All right. Okay, how do you get out of here? Okay, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, bye. I love y'all. The Lord bless. Love you. Okay, bye. Bye. -bye. I'm still trying.